we're on week four. This is March 23rd, and um, today I'm going to do curling with a flat iron or a straightening iron, whatever you want to call it. Um, if you've missed the other videos, I had originally made a video for my friend Gia, curling with the curling wand. Then we did um, the Hot Tools Deep Waver the second week, and then last week was curling with the curling iron. And the difference between the iron and the wand today is curling with a flat iron. This is my flat iron and I will talk more about it as I go. It's kind of dirty and it's old. It's literally 12 years old and so I'll tell about that as I'm doing it because um, I need to get going. So we're going to, I've already just washed my hair this morning and kind of parted it more on the side than the middle and I'm going to take this crown section up just like I did last week when I was curling with the curling iron. I'm going to take this up right here with my little clip. The flat iron I have is actually my second one. I had another one briefly and it didn't get hot enough and so I ended up with this one. I'm going to comb through this, brush through this. I am going to use the uh, thermal setting spray this week that I used last week. It's called Heat Seal. And it just helps your hair to hold the curl. Sometimes I spray each individual strand and sometimes I just spray the whole bunch of it and just brush through it. So I'm going to take our first piece here and here's where it gets tricky and this is not my forte. I can do other things with my hair better than I can do this. My sister-in-law, Kayla, can rock the straight iron when she is curling her hair. And so she did work with me and teach me a little bit a couple years ago. So Kayla, if you're watching this, I'm probably not doing exactly the perfect way and you're like, stop, you're doing it wrong. Anyway, it'll be okay in the end. So I'm gonna take my hair in here. You wanna hold on to your hair and you're gonna flip it around Try to hold on to the ends and just pull it through. Now there are lots of techniques for doing this. One thing Kayla did teach me is once you're done with that curl, just kind of twist it some. There you go. I don't necessarily want it quite that curly and there's ways you can keep it from curling that much all the way to the end. Um, but like I said, I'm not so great at this particular technique. So we're going to twist again, hold it, hold your hair tight, pull it through. There we go. I bought this particular flat iron. I remember how old it is because I was on maternity leave with Gavin and I bought it online. It's called an FHI. It's not a Chi, C-H-I. That brand is really expensive and really nice, but I don't have one of those. I have an FHI, which I'm assuming might be like a knockoff. But um, this flat iron has done well for me, but the boys have knocked it onto my tile floor and the plates have fallen out and I've put them back in there. So if there's anything electrical in our house that probably needs to be replaced, it's probably this flat iron, but it still works. And the last time I went to check them out at Beauty Brands, they have this identical one 12 years later. I think I paid like $70 for it and it was over $100 there. And I thought, good grief, if mine still works, I don't really want to have to replace it, so I kept it. So that's it. You see, I have some little strands here. I'm going to take my little jack here up here at the top. Remember the first week I talked about my jack here? If you didn't see that, it's because after I had jack, I lost about a third of my hair. You could see through it. And then when it came back in, this piece here kind of grew in a little wonky and it doesn't always want to play right with the rest of my hair. Okay, so we're already done with that side, but I have more hair on this side because my hair is kind of parted over here. So I have not replaced this flat iron and maybe I should, but it still works. 
and I honestly prefer to use a couple other styling tools more than my flat iron. My friend Kathy requested this particular video. Her hair's not even long enough to do this, so I don't know. Maybe she's just curious about how this works. Okay, this side of your hair is tricky, and it took me a long time to figure this out, but it has to do with your wrist, okay? Because we still want to curl back, so you're going to turn your wrist like this, okay? It's a little awkward to get used to. You're going to put your hair in there, and then you're going to turn back. But if you don't start out with your wrist turned like that, it is not going to work. There's probably another technique for doing that, but that's the best way I found. And I think a long time ago when I figured that out, I told my friends Jen and Deanne, I think we were at breakfast together, some of them like, oh, it's all in the wrist. I figured out what I'm doing wrong, it's all in the wrist. Exciting, I know. So my friend Kathy requested this, and then my sister-in-law, Ronan, has a sister-in-law named Amy. Hey, Amy. She lives down in Texas. I'm not sure what that makes her. I think she's my double sister-in-law. Hmm. That's kind of neat. So anyway, Amy has big Texas hair. Her hair is brown. Her hair always looks pretty whenever I see pictures of her. <coughs> so she had requested this video as well. I've been practicing actually because I'm not real good at this and too if you have a piece that doesn't turn out the way you want it to or a piece of that piece that doesn't you can always just pick it up and go back in and do it again and that's okay or if you find the top part didn't turn out but the bottom part did I recommend just doing the whole strand because you might get it like looking weird within the shaft of the hair. So remember, still turning our wrist, still going backwards, trying to hold on to the hair so that it goes through. Now, I am not good at this at all when my hair is short. There are some girls who do a great job with it, with short hair. I used to work with a girl that we went on sales calls all the time together because she was a sales person, I'm a clinical person, I would go and talk to the doctors and um, nursing facilities and stuff about the clinical part of hospice, and which I still do. But, this girl doesn't work with this any longer, but she and I, of course, would always talk about hair. And her hair, she liked the look of the end being straight, like I talked about last week, how you curl it with the curling iron, but you leave the end out straight, which you can accomplish with the flat iron. But her hair, she said she had a hard time curling it with the flat iron because it was short. So she would curl it with the curling iron and then she would go back into her hair after she was done and she would with the flat iron and she would clamp the ends and just straighten the ends which I thought was a really cool trick so she got the same effect that she was looking for but she did it with a curling iron and then she just clamped those ends of her hair to give it that little straight beachy look on the end so She's a really pretty girl. She can do whatever she wants with her hair and do a good job at it. Okay, so that one didn't turn out right, so I'm doing that again. Pull it through. Okay, see I'm getting all these curls here? All right, so now I think I'm gonna divide this up a little bit. It's always just kind of a judgment call with the bangs, how you're going to do those. I don't like it when they separate from the rest of my hair. So that's usually my goal, is to keep them from separating from my hair. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. 
All right, last strand here, and then we're gonna do that crown piece. So kind of the same technique, pulling it through. Now this flat iron goes up to like 430 degrees, okay? Ugh. So part of it popped out without curling. So I'm just gonna try to do this little piece right here. See that steam coming off in there? Yeah, it's pretty hot. So I don't have it on 430 degrees. I, ooh, uh-oh, wait. It's on, I'm gonna turn it down some. It was on 450. I only like it to be on about 400. So I'm gonna grab my mirror again. Look at the back of my hair. See if I got everything. It's okay if they don't all look the same, because that's kind of what you want anyway. You don't want every piece looking the same. And we are at 11 minutes, so we're not doing too bad. I'm gonna just pop a little bit more curl into this one. But I'm not gonna take it all the way to the end. I'm just gonna let it be. All right, top part, almost there. We are anxiously anticipating the arrival of spring here. Oh, it's been so stinking cold. And I have um, refused to wear my boots anymore. I'm not wearing boots. I'm not wearing sweaters. I'm not doing it because it's spring. So fortunately, the other day, I was wearing flats. My gold flats, which i got to figure out how to clean them. And I was coming in from the parking garage at work. I was having lunch for the staff that day, and I had a cart full of desserts and two liters of soda. I had a two liter of soda. Fortunately, Diet Dr. Pepper, which is the first thing I noticed. It wasn't regular soda, it was diet. Rolled off the cart and exploded. I mean, literally, the whole thing exploded. So I'm still using the same technique with turning my wrist. Where did it explode? All over the concrete floor in the garage, the door, and directly into my shoes. So I'm in the garage, standing there, kind of shocked, but at the same time squishing around in my shoes and realizing that I'm like standing in Diet Dr. Pepper. The whole bottle, the lid flew off, the whole bottle just gone. So I picked up the bottle, threw it away. We're remodeling our office. We just got new carpet and new paint, and it's beautiful. And I walked in and the girls met me and they're like, oh, you're covered in soda. And so, well, my shoes really, not so much my clothes, but I was wearing dark pants, so I'm really not sure. So anyway, I rinsed out my shoes and sat at my desk barefooted for a while. Then I had meetings to run, so I put my squishy shoes back on, which still have a hint of Diet Dr. Pepper, because I haven't had time to clean them yet. So I wore them the rest of the day, and that night to church. That's just what you do. You just keep going, whatever. My friends at work know that I love anything that's a good story, and they're like, Robin, it's going to make a great story. Well, it does. That's true. That little booger is not one to work. There. All right, now I'm gonna check the back again and see how we did. Okay. Now, my sister-in-law, Kayla, is really good at kind of leaving her hair just in these ringlets and it being really pretty. I usually kind of run my fingers through mine a little bit. And of course, since I don't like flat hair, don't like it, I don't think I can pull it off very well. I go through here and I'm not really messing up the curls. The end result of all of these curling hairstyles I've done, 
are pretty much the same with how I handle it. I think I'm gonna do a video on kind of what to do with day two hair, because I think a lot of women out there just feel like they have to wash their hair every day. You don't have to wash it every day unless you really have oily hair and you have to wash it. But a lot of women wash their hair too often and it dries out your hair. So I might do a video on what to do with your day two hair. Because it takes me about 45 seconds. It's going to be a short video. It's like an Instagram video for day two hair. Anyway. So I'm just kind of fluffing it up a little bit. Turn this puppy off. I'm going to unplug it too. Because it's potentially a fire hazard. And that's it. Curling with the flat iron, not my best work, but it's okay. So hope you guys have a great Friday and um, enjoy the sunshine if it's sunny where you are. It's supposed to rain here. Okay, bye.